Hi everyone, I hope you're all doing okay. Um, first things first, apologies if my voice is sounding a bit funny. I had a bad cold the week between being up north in the UK and traveling to Canada. I basically spent the entire week asleep and <laughs> trying to shake it off before I traveled again. Um, I mostly got rid of it, but I think the flights and the dry air and like all the aircon in Canada, same as America, kind of really got me. <laughs> I've been kind of wheezy and my throat is really scratchy, so just bear with me. I think it should be fine, it's mostly gone, but it's just like every now and then it pops back up and it's a nightmare. Um, I am back from Canada and I thought I would do a little talk today and then some more tomorrow potentially. I haven't started travel scrapbooking yet, but I wanted to show you how I set up my pages for traveling. Um, and then tomorrow I'll scrapbook and then hopefully it all will pull together. <laughs> um, so today I'll talk to you about my pages. Tomorrow I'll show you the scrapbook and I will talk about what we did. Um, it was a really short trip. I know some of you guys sent me recommendations and I had written them down and I had plotted them on my little Google Maps thing. Um, but we, our scheduling got like slightly messed up because when we arrived in Barrie in Ontario, the weather was really bad. So we kind of lost part of the first day, the Friday, because it was like torrentially raining. In the UK, it would be like flash flood weather. Um, and you guys have a lot of surface water on your roads. I don't know how you deal with it, but the wind as well was really bad. It was like gale force winds or something. It was like, at one point the truck door blew open and it almost tore my fingernail off. <laughs> um, so the weather was a lot <laughs> that first day. Um, we had planned to go to Niagara Falls that day and then we would have had the full day of Sunday and Monday in Toronto, but because we couldn't go to Niagara because it was too wet and rainy and windy and it would have sucked, um, we then lost that day in Toronto. So it doesn't really matter. I would like to go back. <laughs> I had a really good time. Um, I really like Canada, I think. It would be really nice to go back and see a lot more, um, to actually see Toronto, first of all, but also to maybe travel further, like, to Vancouver and British Columbia and stuff. I have family somewhere in Canada, like, additional family from my other side, from my dad's side, um, and it would be cool, I don't know, to see, to see more of Canada. Um, I'll explain my days better tomorrow, but that's kind of what happened. So it was a really short trip. Obviously, the main reason we went was for a wedding. It wasn't actually like a holiday. It wasn't like a traveling tourism thing. It was for a wedding. <laughs> it was just a really, really lovely excuse to see some stuff while we were there. Um, but how I set my pages up was I made two designs for myself, which again, still loving the file effects and the freedom it gives me to do that. Um, I made this one, which is kind of like a travel itinerary thing. So it has like the destination, the duration and the dates and then like document requirements because to go to Canada you have to have an electronic something approval, an ETA basically, I can't remember what it stands for, but you have to be approved, you have to, it's like, it's a bit like a visa but it's not called a visa. Um, you have to have one of those and obviously you need your passport. And then flight details for both sides, but we took four flights because we flew via Dublin. My grandmother had some air miles to use up, I think, so we flew Aer Lingus the whole way via Dublin. It was actually a really nice flight. <laughs> um, big up Aer Lingus because it was, it was really good. Um, so we had two lots of flights either side, which was kind of a lot. I was really feeling that on the return journey. On the way there, it was kind of fun because it was like a little prep flight before your main flight. Um, on the way back, I was so tired. <laughs> um, and we had some delay getting off the tarmac in Dublin as well because Heathrow had issues. So it was like, it was long. Um, and then accommodation details too, which there's not loads of room. I don't know if I'll make these available. If you want them, let me know. Maybe I'll pop them on Patreon for free. Um, I don't feel like there's enough to it. It's not substantial enough to go in the shop really. <laughs> um, but if you're interested, um, they'll be on Patreon. Um, so I just added some brief notes about our accommodation details. The first night we stayed in a hotel in Heathrow and it overlooked the runway, which was kind of cool. And then for most of our time in Barrie, we stayed at an Airbnb opposite my uncle's house, which was really fun. <laughs> um, and then for one night in Toronto before we flew, we stayed in like an apartment. It's like an Airbnb, but it's an apartment. It's interesting. Um, the lifts were a bit wild and also the parking in Toronto is all underground mostly so it was like kind of intense and weird and small and everything is very like, I don't know, interesting, different. <laughs> um, it was really good though, no complaints. Um, so that's the info I took with me kind of and then I wrote down the gates for the way there. Forgot to do them for the way back, I got kind of mixed up and I was so tired by that point that I just 
I don't think they're necessary anyway, but I put the info there just as part of like the cataloging of it all, the documentation of the journey. Um, it might be nice to look back on, I guess, to have that info like explicitly written down. And then I also made myself a packing list. <laughs> um, and this is taken from the design for one of the autism inserts. Um, and also the same pages that I use for my um, like habit tracking type stuff, my like remembering to be a human stuff. It's the same layout. So I put like documents, clothes, toiletries, and then miscellaneous, which is like technology and stuff and everything else. Um, and then I numbered it. So it's like however many pairs or items you need of a certain thing. I thought that might be kind of good. Mostly I just wanted to use the space efficiently. <laughs> so again, I don't know if it's something that's worth offering to you guys because it was a bit like, it's a bit messy, I guess. I'm not sure it makes that much sense, but it kind of worked. I didn't actually write it, tick them off, but I had the same list on my phone just because I find it easier to reference when I'm packing. Um, and then with the intention to come back tomorrow probably and tick these off properly so that I can see what I took. Um, helpful I guess when you're repacking and then you can split things down into your different cases and I don't know that's what I did and then the next thing I did was make this like I like itinerary or like daily page for it again this is adapted from my daily pages I think for my filofax inserts <laughs> um, I say that skeptically I think it is um it doesn't look quite right but anyway what I did then was have the day number, which I forgot to write down, <laughs> um, the weather, which I'll tick off, and then I wrote the date, and then the itinerary, and there's like a timeline. I wasn't really using the timeline, but I always think it's nice to have it there as an option. So what I did was write down the main things we did each day at the top, and then underlined that, and then wrote a brief summary. And then meals, and then expenses. <laughs> um, and actually, when I was there, I thought things were so expensive because the conversion rate is quite bad. It's like for every pound you spend here, it's like two dollars or something over there. It's quite a lot, maybe two dollars fifty. It's like it's it's quite bad. So when you're buying things over there, like a coffee, it's eight dollars. And I kept being like, Jesus, I can't keep, I can't keep having coffee. I can't buy the souvenirs I want to buy because everything's so expensive. Not considering the fact, of course, that when I came home and looked at my bank statement. <laughs> It was half of what I thought I'd spent um, because of the conversion, which is fine because on the last day we were there, I did go back and buy more souvenirs and I was fine with everything I bought. I just think I maybe would have bought like a little bit more if I had thought about it harder. <laughs> um, but we all know math is not my strong suit, especially when it comes to currency and that kind of thing. So it doesn't matter. I'm not hurt for not having an extra sweater. <laughs> um, the only thing I do regret is that I picked up this little key ring from Roots, which is a Canadian like lifestyle brand, I guess. They make like comfy clothes and other lifestyle bits. I picked this up in Blue Mountain for my brother, um, but I'm kind of fond. I'm kind of attached. I kind of want to keep it. I was looking online to see if they sell it online and I could order it, but they have the other versions of him, but not actually this one with the little flag. And I'm like, oh no. <laughs> um, so I'm not sure what I'm going to do there. Hopefully Luke's not watching um, because I don't know if I'm gonna give him away or not. I wish I'd bought like two more of these because then I could have had one and Luke could have had one and I should have got one for Luke's girlfriend as well. Would have been cool. Um, I don't know what to do about that. But anyway, it was fine. I did write down my expenses. They weren't too bad each day. Um, most of the money obviously went on things like entry fees. That kind of stuff felt really expensive. Like when we did the CN Tower, it's like $100 for two people. And I was like wheezing. <laughs> um, but then when you come back and you look at the statement, it's like £50, which is not unequivalent to what the entry for some stuff in London costs. But then I think... I've been really lucky to grow up in the UK where a lot of museum entry and stuff and attractions are free. Um, so it's just, it was an adjustment, I guess. And I was like stressing, even though I didn't really need to. Um, but that's how I laid out my daily pages. So I took these with me blank so that if I had time in the evenings, I could fill them out if I wanted to. Um, in the end, I didn't. <laughs> I didn't really have a lot of time in the evenings. We were out quite late most nights, hanging out with family and stuff. Um, obviously the wedding was a late night and then I just kept tucking things into my file of facts like postcards and bits and bobs and then I came home yesterday and filled these in oh no I came home I didn't I came home on Monday and arrived home on Tuesday so it's I'm like I have really bad jet lag <laughs> I'm not gonna lie so we flew Monday evening and then arrived Tuesday but I only slept for an hour on the flight um which was a mistake probably because it felt like it was still Monday to me especially because we left Monday afternoon and then you lose five hours. <laughs> so I was like, I was confused, you guys. Did we lose or gain five hours? 
I'm not sure, but basically the, we time traveled in reverse this time and I did not adjust in the way that I had hoped. Um, it was bad to only sleep an hour. If you're taking a red eye flight, an overnight flight, definitely sleep a good amount because I only had an hour and I got home and it didn't feel like a new day and then I couldn't sleep and it's been like a whole thing. Um, on Wednesday, Wednesday the dog got picked up to go to daycare at 7 and that was rough, <laughs> waking up at 7 and then I went back to sleep on my sofa like I normally would for like an hour or two, I normally wake up at like 10 or 11 I woke up at 2.30pm and <laughs> I was so confused I kept staring at the time on my phone thinking that my phone must be stuck on Canadian time and it wasn't and I was just, it was a whole thing, okay? Um, today, not so bad, waking up was hard work but now that I'm awake I feel kind of wired I'm finding that I'm very dizzy actually, I've got like the spins, <laughs> you know, when you've been drinking and you get the spins, I think jet lag gives me the spins, um, if I close my eyes I start spinning, <laughs> so it's kind of intense, but I filled out these pages, um, and I did that the yesterday evening, because the day I came home I was wrecked, so I did it yesterday evening, um, with the intention that once these were done I could then come and do the scrapbooking bits and how I did it, how it works, I think it's smart, <laughs> um, is that I made it so that the day goes on the left and then you have a blank page on the right. The theory being, <laughs> um, depending how much you have to add in, because it's a commonplace style page on this side, you could actually take an extra blank commonplace page. Do I have one? Yes. You could take an extra blank page or however many you need, like two or three of them, and you can insert them in between the pages. And that way you'll have a lot of room and you can use different amounts of room depending on the day. Um, so that's kind of cool. I think that would be nice because I have different amounts of photos and ephemera for each day. Um, some days I have a lot and some days I have very little, but it'll be nice to have that kind of room to work with. So what I'll have to do is really carefully plan my pages out though, so I know how many I need so that I don't mess up the pagination. Um, but again, it's just a nice feeling to be in my file of facts and to have that freedom, because if I was in a bound book, especially a dated book, it would be a lot harder to slim down the photos I want to use. Working like this, I don't really have to choose, I can just use as many as I want, so that's nice. <laughs> um, so that's how I laid it out. As I said, I wanted to show it to you before I fill it up so it looks less confusing, because by the time I'm done I think it's going to be a little much to look at. Um, undecided if I'm going to film it or not, obviously I've used up all of my normal music <laughs> for the travel segment, um, so I might just show it to you again tomorrow when it's done, also because it's less stressful. <laughs> um, it can be a little tense when I'm filming while trying to do it, I feel like I get really like, um, like overwhelmed maybe sometimes because you're having to remember that you're filming while filming while also trying to do your journaly bit, and sometimes it's just a bit much, I start to get a bit stressed I guess. Um, it's been interesting because I really thought I didn't have good enough photos or video footage. While I'm away places and while I'm with people and traveling and I want to document stuff for my memory, um, it's really hard because I'm always like, there's like three aspects to it. There's the wanting to document it well for myself. There's also the not wanting to get so in my head about it that I'm not in the moment. And then there's actually being in the moment and spending the time with my family. <laughs> so it's like these three aspects all feel really important to me. Like making sure I'm documenting, but not stressing about it. But then making sure I'm also present at the same time as documenting. So not spending the whole time obsessing over the footage, but making sure that I get enough. And then also making sure that I have time where I put my phone away and I'm not like obsessively looking through the lens and stuff the whole time. Um, and it's a strange juggling act but one that does feel very important to me. <laughs> um, I don't imagine I need to talk again about how important the pr the practice of memory keeping and documenting stuff is to me, um, but it is. And when I travel somewhere abroad, <laughs> um, which I don't do very often at all, um, it's it feels very tense for me because I feel like I have to do a good job of remembering it, of collecting it, of making it real for myself to be able to remember it later. Um, it puts a lot of pressure, I guess, on me. I put a lot of pressure on myself, but in a way that, I don't know how to explain it, it feels important. Like, I, it's not as simple as being like, well, just don't pressure yourself, because it's like, I have to make sure I get the footage, because I know that if I don't get the footage I want, if I, it's not about it being perfect footage, but it's about capturing the feeling, and if I don't capture the feeling and the mood of the day, then I don't feel like I can remember it as well. Like, it's not just taking the footage, but about capturing the 
the vibe, <laughs> if you will, for lack of a better term. Um, and it could be quite tense, I guess. Um, when I was there, I wasn't sure I had actually managed it because I was overwhelmed with everything going on. And because it was such a short space of time, we packed a lot in, we did a lot very fast. Um, and then obviously the weather the first day kind of freaked me out because it was bad and I wasn't sure if it was going to improve. Obviously we took a chance by delaying Niagara Falls because Niagara Falls was really like the main touristy thing I wanted to do because I really love weird tacky tourist stuff. <laughs> also because the Frankenstein roller coaster, how is that not a bucket list thing for me? Um, I did it by the way, it was really good. Um, so because we had the delay in Niagara Falls, I was really stressed that if the weather didn't improve, we wouldn't be able to do it. So then I felt really off the first couple of days, I guess, or the first day. It was absolutely fine. Um, I make It was really like a mountain up a molehill. But I guess when you have the kind of issues with your memory that I do, and I hope most of you don't, <laughs> but if you do, I guess you'll know how worrying it is to know that you're experiencing something that you might never get to experience again. And you might not be able to remember it is like, it sucks, especially because I went with my grandmother, who I'm close to, and it just like, I wanted to make sure that I caught it. And I did, it was fine. My point was gonna be <laughs> that I did actually pull it off when I got home and I was finally looking at it. I did my camera photos first, then my phone photos, and then this morning I did the video. Um, and I was looking at it all over the last like 24 hours and I was so relieved to see that not only did I get some good shots on my camera, <laughs> but the phone photos are also really good and those are the ones I'll print for her. Um, I feel like I took the right amount of photos in the right places, which is really nice. And then video footage too, I was really nervous about that because I wasn't sure that I had filmed enough. When I was there, I wasn't really feeling it. Um, I was, I was happy and having a good time, but I wasn't really feeling the filming. Um, but I put it together this morning and I think it's fine, so I'm happy. Um, but it's a, it's a whole thing. <laughs> um, also what I did while I was there, going back onto the practicality side of it, is um, I collected all my bits and bobs in this folder, um, this zip envelope, it's pretty tough, I got it from WH Smith, which is a stationery shop here in the UK, um, and I collected all my ephemera up into this folder. Um, I have this little sticker I bought in a shop called like Blueberry Moon, I think it was called, in Barry. Um, recommend it if you're in Barry or you're around the area because it was really good and cute. It had a lot of illustration stuff. I actually found a card from one of my mutuals. I don't know where I put it. Um, I don't think it's in here, but it was cool. I was happy to find it. Um, some postcards. These are very annoying me. This is something I want to talk about. Why are the postcards so big when you go to America? Um, they're not normal size postcards. Here are the ones. Here's one I bought at Blueberry Moon, and it's a normal A6 postcard. Do you see how much bigger this is? That is annoying because it doesn't fit properly. Like, it's too long. It will fit lengthwise because my pages are big, but it's too wide. And that's such a nuisance. Like, all the postcards were this size or bigger, and it's literally, it's infuriating. <laughs> Me and my grandmother were both looking for normal size postcards for ages, and we just couldn't find any. Like, these ones aren't even... Oh, they are the same size. But all postcards should be A6, and this is a hill I'll die on. <laughs> um, there's no reason for them to be, to be bigger. Like, there is a standardized postcard size for a reason, in my opinion. Um, but these are cute, and I just... I wish they would stop putting weird fonts on stuff, though. Um, I found this one of Barry, which is cool. Yeah, and like Lake Simcoe and stuff. Um, so that's pretty sick. I like that. Um, and I got this little beaver one, obviously. See, these aren't even the same size. Like, why? <laughs> oh my god. Um, so I got those. I got an even bigger one. Because it's kind of cool. This one feels more retro than anything else, and I really like it. And it has a little fact, and I was like, I do like that. But obviously, where the hell am I going to put this? <laughs> like, that's not going anywhere, is it? What I might have to do is photocopy it. Is that smart? And then I could fold it up. Okay, I might have cracked that. I might photocopy that, because it's literally not... I can't work with that. <laughs> but I thought it was cool. Um... So the other tip I have is when you go places like the aquarium and you check a bag or something, you can ask them for an extra tag. Um, he took this out of a drawer, they're not using them at the moment, but it gave me a little blue... a little blue tab somewhere. <laughs> somewhere being the keyword. Um, I don't know where it is. Tim Hall... oh here it is. So this came off the end, um, and it means that I have this as a little souvenir. I don't really need this bit. 
I think you put it on the bag. It's like a luggage tag. But this side is really cute as a little souvenir for the aquarium. So that's a fun a fun tip, I guess, <laughs> is that you can ask people for extra bits. Um, and they'll normally be very accommodating. Um, this one is a parking ticket thing. Um, it's cool. I might hole punch it. It might be a bit big, undecided. Um, keeping receipts for things like parking um, and just bits and bobs like that, really. That's kind of what I did. I'll show it all to you tomorrow properly, but I collected it all up in that envelope was the main thing that I wanted to say. Um, it just works really well to have somewhere to put all of your bits, your little bits. When I was out and about, I collected it in my Edgar Allan Poe pouch. <laughs> um, I keep like wipes and earphones in here and like strepsils apparently <laughs> and lip balm and then I could put like smaller bits in here if I needed to um, or I would put it in one of the zip pouches, not the zip pouches but the little, oh, it's the CN Tower ticket. <laughs> um, I was putting some bits in here. Oh yeah, look, my aquarium ticket. This is cool. Oh, and my Canadian Midway Pass. Okay, wait. There was some really good ephemera on this trip, you guys, I'm not gonna lie. I have so much and I'm really excited. <laughs> um, so this is the, I don't rate this actually, in the arcade in Niagara Falls, you do it all digitally. Um, it's really boring because it takes all of the tactility really out of playing with like the, the coin machines and stuff, the coin pushes. Um, they were all digital and my grandma was not impressed and neither was I. <laughs> it was okay for stuff like Mario Kart and I played Pac-Man for a long time, but I do prefer having the coins and the paper tickets. Because of this, you also don't get tickets out of the machine, which sucks. Um, and then the dog is stirring. My aquarium ticket, which is cool. They put a joke on it, which was quite good. Um, we had fun with that and I like that there's pictures and stuff. Um, and that is mostly it, I think, to be honest. I just wanted to show you kind of what I was working with before I pull it all together. As I said, I'm not sure I'm gonna film it, so I thought it would be good just to kind of show you <laughs> before I pull it all together so neatly. Um, these are all of my bits and pieces. It was a good trip for ephemera. I really picked up a lot. Sometimes you go and like nothing is on paper anymore. There was a surprising amount of paper tickets. Um, absolutely fantastic, to be honest. <laughs> I'm really happy with the amount of paper tickets we got. Um, and even though I didn't like that all of this was digital, it's still nice that you can keep the card, I guess, if you want to. You can also recycle them there, and I think they reset them, um, but as a tourist, I would like to keep it. So at least that was something. Um, last thing to mention today, just in case anyone's curious, while I was away, I started reading the Book of Azrael, um, and I finished it last night, <laughs> and then I immediately started reading book two at four in the morning because I have jet lag, and also because it ended on kind of a cliffhanger and I was like, I need closure. So I read it for like two more hours and no closure came. <laughs> I was like, I need to stop. Um, it was quite good, I really enjoyed it. It wasn't what I was expecting, that's what I'll say. Um, it was interesting, it's one of those books where like a lot is happening and nothing is happening. It was like mostly just conversations and I was kind of like, I'm not sure what's going on. But I did enjoy it. It's one of those ones. It's like when I read Akata, I was like, I had a really good time, but I don't know how I feel. And then it's like, well, I can't be disparaging if I had a good time. So it's just one of those ones. I gave it four stars on Goodreads. Um, I think it's just jarring to go from reading a lot of nonfiction and then jumping back into fiction. I'm always like baffled about what, what's going on. Um, but it's also nice to read something a bit faster because when I read non-fiction it takes me like a month um, and when I read fiction it takes me like two days. <laughs> so this one was like 600 or something pages I think. It's almost exactly 600 pages and I read it um, mostly on the flight back. I read the majority of it on the flight back um, so it's nice to pick up some speed and get some books read. I'm reading book two I'm reading book two on my phone. <laughs> I don't own the physical copy of book two and I'm really hoping it's gonna pull together because like it's so sad at the moment. It's like it's it's sad. Um, let me know if you've read it. <laughs> um, okay, I think that's it. The other thing maybe I could show you is like got this little t-shirt at Niagara Falls. I wanted to get a sweater but it was like literally a hundred dollars for a sweater with the same design and I was like I can't do it. And then I, when I came home, I realized that's like 50 pounds-ish, which is still way too much, but I was like, I probably would have if I had realized, because like, 
I don't buy fridge magnets or anything, postcards are hard to buy, but I like to have a sweater or something as like a tourist thing. Like I really like little tourist sweaters. So got the t-shirt, which will be nice for the summer, I guess. And then I did actually get like a blue Toronto sweater. I'm wearing it right now. I don't know if I can show you, <laughs> but it's comfy and cute and it was only $40. So a win. Um, okay, that's my, was meant to be my short, my short catch up to start. Tomorrow, hopefully, maybe we'll be shorter because we can just flip through and look at stuff. But that's what's going on. That's that's what happened. That's how it felt. <laughs> um, if you have any other questions about how I prepped for traveling, let me know. I hope I covered everything book wise. Um, mental prep wise, not a lot. <laughs> Physical prep wise, also not a lot. My only other tip is if you're autistic, I took three of the same shirt with me <laughs> just to try and reduce some of the decision fatigue. Um, that stripy shirt you can see me wearing in like two or three of the days. Um, all different shirts, <laughs> but the same shirt. So that's my other weird tip, I guess. Um, okay, I will talk to you tomorrow. Hopefully this is going to pull together into something cool. I am kind of stressed about it because I don't know how I want to lay it out. It's a lot to, to deal with, photographs and ephemera wise. Um, which is also maybe why I'm nervous to film it because I think I would rather just chip away at it quietly on the sofa without the worry of like performing <laughs> the act. Um, but I'll come back and show you. Okay team, it is Sunday today, the 20th of April. Um, I started putting my scrapbook pages together on Friday, I think, probably. I filmed that previous talking segment on Thursday. <laughs> um, at the time, I thought it was Friday, I think. I was going back and editing it and I'd put the wrong like day of the week card in, so I don't know what's happening. Um, Friday, I accidentally slept half of the afternoon. <laughs> um, I did a lot of work that morning and then I went to sleep for like 20 minutes. 20 minutes was actually two hours. Um, so the jet lag is still eating me alive, that's the update. I think I feel slightly better today, but Friday, Saturday was pretty rough. <laughs> um, I guess because of that, and because I've been taking a lot of naps and breaks in between, this has taken me longer than I thought it would to put together. I haven't actually finished all of the writing, but I have finished sticking everything in. <laughs> um, so because it's Sunday now, and I was hoping actually this video was going to go up on Friday evening, <laughs> um, I figured I would just do the flip through now and show you because I have errands to run tomorrow. Oh my god, today's Saturday. It's not Sunday today. Did I say it was Sunday? <laughs> god okay i have errands to run tomorrow is the thing um i need i'm finally getting my nails done because i've been trying to long them out since my auntie's wedding um and i am ready to like claw my own fingers off <laughs> so i'm gonna get my nails done tomorrow have some groceries and stuff to buy i need to pick meds up that kind of thing um your post-holiday errands if you will um basically even though it's not 100 percent finished i thought i would show you today just so we can get it wrapped up and organized we're bordering on like 10 or 12 days since the last video went up which doesn't really matter in the grand scheme of things but it's a bit like unpacking your suitcase when you get in i like i need this to be relatively finished so i can start reacclimatizing. <laughs> um so let's do the flip no more rambling um i tried to be careful about how i layered things i enjoy the process of layering <laughs> um so what i have often done is stick a couple of bits on each page and then write around it because i do it this way and even when i normally do my books it means that i normally stick first and then write around that's sort of my process i normally layer things up and push it around a bit and see how it looks if you're a regular viewer you'll be very familiar with that it takes me a long time i do a lot of back and forth before i commit to sticking stuff down um so underneath here, I have a picture of the plane out of the window. Um, this Obviously, we're sitting in the plane, <laughs> but this is an Aer Lingus plane, so it's like the same one we're in. Um, and I thought that was quite nice. Um, my printer isn't the best. This is just my home printer, by the way. In the end, I didn't use an instant printer of any kind or a mini printer. I just used my home printer. The stress was getting to me. <laughs> um, so it, the quality isn't the best, but I recognize it for what it is, which is what counts. I have my ticket for the Heathrow Express, and then I have a photo that I took from a video still of my grandma making some tea on the plane. Um, just because that kind of captures the feeling, which again is what I was talking about the other day. Um, for me, this this captures <laughs> captures the feeling of getting the plane and hanging out with her and stuff, so that's nice. Um, so this is the Friday that we travelled, um, and then this is also Friday afternoon. I think. Yep. 
I'm getting my dates really mixed up. Um, let's just trust that Megan, who wrote it down, got it right. Um, so this is the truck window. I realised afterwards I should have taken a picture of the giant truck my grandma rented because it was huge and intimidating as a British person. I've never seen a truck that big. It was like, I had like a flatbed, you know, like it was an actual truck. Um, I was nervous as hell because I was like, can you actually drive this? Um, but she handled it like a champ, so I'll never doubt her again. Should have taken a picture of her like sat in the truck with her glasses on. <laughs> Um, but instead all I have is the picture of the wing mirror and it's because in French and in English on the window on the, the mirror in the window it says like images are closer than they seem which you don't really get in British cars they don't they don't have that written down um, it's a very like TV Tumblr photo-esque kind of thing that I associate it with um, but so I took a photo it's kind of cool again you can't really see it in the printout but I know it's there and I know what the picture's for so it's kind of nice um, this also kind of captures the autumnal colours that were present in Canada when I was there. Um, not sure why it was so autumnal looking, <laughs> but it really was, and I was happy for it. I really liked it, so that kind of captures that. Um, again, these are just my brief notes, but I went over that the other day. What I've done on the rest of the pages is talk more about what's in the photos and kind of more in detail about the little bits that were going on, whereas these pages were summaries. Um, so then I've got some photos of Blue Mountain, which is where we went on Friday because Niagara, it was too wet. <laughs> we put Niagara off. Um, it was really cool, but it was obviously very out of season. Um, but it was still neat to see it. I would really like to go back, I think, like maybe in like the proper winter when it's snowy and stuff and cute. I bet it's cute at Christmas. Um, and I'm using my mini super sticker club stickers kind of throughout. I used a lot of them across the pages. I think all the stickers you see are from the mini super sticker club. <laughs> so I guess I'll link the website in the description. Um, it was just nice to bring some more colour in because some pages like these ones don't have as much ephemera, but I wanted them to be cohesive as much as they could be. So there we go. Um, the next page is just more Blue Mountain stuff and talking about the evening. Um, I need to add some bits here which is fine, I can go back and do that. I then put in a postcard I bought from that Blueberry Moon shop. Um, I just think it's really cute <laughs> with the beaver. It, on here it says hand printed by Kid Icarus in Toronto. So big up Kid Icarus in Toronto, I guess. Um, I put our boarding passes on the back. Um, we did our flight in two legs, as I mentioned. So it's just the two halves of the flight. Um, covered up names. <laughs> um, and then this is like the Fire Hall pizza place in Blue Mountain. We didn't eat there, we were thinking about it, but we weren't hungry. But it's just a cool building. I kind of like their commitment to the bit. <laughs> it's like Main Street in Disneyland. Um, it's um, pretty cool. And then our little Canadian Tim Horton coffee cups with the, the maple leaf. Again, just kind of cute. And this kind of captures very much the feeling of walking around in the rain. <laughs> um, again, it felt very moody and cool but that's kind of the first day. And then moving on to Saturday, I haven't got anything in the extra notes here, but I might go back and add it later, I'm not sure. Um, this is the day we went to the McLaren Art Gallery or the Art Centre, um, super, super, super cool. We saw some really good exhibitions there. Um, I'll link it in the description um, the, for the gallery. And they had some stickers, so I got that in the window. I think this is meant to be like maybe the skyline of Barry or something, or Toronto, not Toronto, would it? But there's like a skyline here on the window um, and I thought that was kind of cool <laughs> or maybe it's not a skyline it looks more like a voice or something you know like a sound wave um, either way I thought it was neat again just kind of writing about the day and my feelings and what we thought of the exhibition um, and then I have a photo of my hand with the little exhibition papers, which I did keep, but they're a bit big because they're A4. One of them was also on like a really heavy cardstock and the other one was on printer paper, so I was like, there's not even consistency. Um, so I just have a photo of them, which is nice. Again, it kind of captures the feeling more, I think, than the actual printout would, if you know what I mean. It's putting myself in the place, I guess. Um, here I have my table card from the wedding. Um, super cute and then on the I glued it together because it obviously stands open on the back I stuck the little thank you tag from the little uh, I couldn't remember this the other day either what do you call it the wedding favor um, I put the little tag on the back which is nice and then I hole punched it super carefully <laughs> um, this photo of downtown Barry we found some graffiti on the back of a building it was pretty cool um, just thought it was neat and then this sticker, it says Catch a Peak of Kempen, Kempenfelt Kelly, Barry, Ontario. So I picked this up in Blueberry Moon again. It's illustrated. thought it was sick as hell. Um, obviously, I picked it up because it has Barry, Ontario on the edge. And I was like, oh, perfect. <laughs> because I was really looking for like Barry um, tourism things or like uh, souvenir things. 
I don't know what Kempen Falk Kelly is, but I hope it's a local cryptid. I'm gonna Google it and find out. <laughs> um, I just haven't done it yet. But interested to find out what her deal is. Um, and then Sunday, we went to Niagara. So first we have the Tim Hortons receipt, which I know will fade. Um, I guess not too, too worried. Um, could always photocopy it, which is what I did later on, I'll show you, but um, I put this in here. We The first thing we did when we got there was have a coffee <laughs> because we left quite early from the Airbnb we were staying at in Barry, um, and I was like crying for a coffee because I was falling asleep badly in the car, <laughs> um, and we shared a sandwich as well. Um, and then I have this sticker. Um, I picked up these stickers in the souvenir shop when you come out of the halls. Um, I did not realise they were like $11. <laughs> but again, I guess that's like £5 and I probably would pay £5 for souvenir stickers. They also feel like they're reusable. I had actually had the pink one stuck down, decided I hated it, and then managed to peel it back off with minimal fuss. So I think they might be reusable stickers, which is kind of cool. They have kind of like a, a soft textured feel to them, um, <laughs> so I don't regret them. But I definitely was not aware they were $11 when I bought them. Um, I have this photo of the map because the map is huge. Um, it's like this big thick booklet. It's cool, but it's too big to put in a scrapbook really. Um, so I have a photo of me pulling the map out and then a photo of the falls from like the walkway bit. Um, that's the American Falls. <laughs> um, and then I have the photo of the tickets. And I have a photo of the um, horseshoe falls, is that what they're called? <laughs> um, just so I had both, I guess. And also because it kind of captures like the little coats and stuff, which I did on purpose. I really like the colour of the one on the, uni the Canadian side. Um, I think it's neat. And again, because it's like the little photos of the hands, it kind of brings the people in, if you know what I mean. Um, so it's, it's quite nice. I like doing it that way. I always think it's less intrusive than taking selfies of everyone all the time or something. Um, sometimes hands and feet is a nice way to know who's with you without it being so like intense and demanding of people, <laughs> especially if like me you're a bit weird about photos. Um, and then I did actually do what I said I would and I photocopied the really long postcard. Um, I think part of it did get a bit trimmed off but it doesn't really matter, um, enough of it's there I think. I then folded it really carefully so it would fit, <laughs> um, but at least I managed to retain the fun fact. And then when you turn it over, I've got a photo of ice cream that we had. <laughs> and then there's a photo of me and my grandma um, on the ticket from the falls, which was in my phone case for the longest time. Couldn't find it, was stressing out about it, found it in my phone case. Um, so that's nice. It's like a little, I think it's cool. Um, and again, this is kind of like the layering thing I was talking about, where I try to be really careful about like how things look and where things are interacting with each other like which bits you can see on the sides and stuff. I just think that's part of the fun of it. But it is also part of what makes it so time consuming. <laughs> so especially if you're a bit of a perfectionist like me, like I'm not a true perfectionist because otherwise I would die, I would go insane. I do think that good enough is good enough. That's the biggest thing I learned in art school. They were always drilling, like, drilling that into us is like good enough is good enough. Like if it looks fine, you don't have to worry. Like just, just leave it. Because in some places I have like glue smudging um, from the printer ink and stuff, or from the receipts, or the cheap stickers, there's like <laughs> fur from my sweater stuck on it and stuff. Um, and like that does kind of bother me, but then it's like good enough is good enough, it's a scrapbook. Like just, just allow it. <laughs> um, so obviously the edge of this got cut off from the photocopier, but I'm like, it's fine though, isn't it? Like it's good enough. Um, and then again, there's like a fold through here and I'm like, but it's fine. So trying not to be too much of a perfectionist about it all. Um, just trying to capture the feeling and the memory. And then this is where I've got to writing wise. <laughs> um, all of the sticking took me a lifetime and then I started filling in the writing but I got up to here and then it was lunchtime and also my hand was hella cramped up so just leaving it for now and I'll come back to it probably later on. Um, this is a photo of one of the haunted house attractions. We didn't actually go to any of the haunted house attractions because the reviews were absolutely shocking. <laughs> um, people were saying it was like almost an hour of scam and I was like, okay, fair. Um, and I don't really like being jump scared by live actors. Like I just don't appreciate it. I think it's a bit much. Um, it depends on the situation, but generally speaking, I don't like to be grabbed, <laughs> so. But it's cool because it's like these neon lights. I have a better photo of this from my camera, um, but this is just the one from my phone that I printed because it's not worth trying to print camera photos with such a bad printer and at such a small scale. 
um but again it's just that feeling of like i really loved this and i framed it through the mouth with the teeth and i just i liked it i was kind of proud of it um it was one of those ones where i knew when i went home and showed it with my dad he'd be like ah oh, cool framing and i was like thank you <laughs> so um this is one of the mini super stickers again it just says okay with a little devil face just to have something a little extra on there um, here I will talk about all of the weird camp horror stuff in Niagara Falls. Um, and then this one actually is a camera photo, I printed it a bit bigger. And it's at the top of the Frankenstein roller coaster, which we did go on, I'm really excited about it. Um, it was like shonky as hell, it was so like rickety. I thought for sure it was old, but I asked the guy how old it was and he said it was only two years old and I was like, oh, like embarrassed face emoji. <laughs> so, um... It's really rickety. I will warn you that if you ever think about going on it. My grandma, we did one loop and they were like, you want to go again? And I would have said yes, but my grandma was like, no. <laughs> um, it was a bit much. It like really rattles your bones. Um, you probably like dislocate your shoulders, that kind of ride. So um, again, for the layering on the back, I've got two photos of the outside of the Frankenstein place. It's not actually associated with the Burger King. It's just a funny tie-in. The building for the Frankenstein is actually on this side. It's like a haunted house. And then because it's on top, they just added the burger. You're not supporting Burger King when you go to the Frankenstein place, <laughs> um, just in case anyone was worried. And then I have the ride because they have like that old style, like airbrush spray paint, like skull, like fiery skull on the side of the rides. Um, again, it's just like that trashy horror stuff and I love it so much. So there we go. And again, I've got my little feet in <laughs> just as a way to tie it in. Um, it's just a way of adding some presence to the photos, I think. I really like it. So then I have my Great Canadian Midway, which I already ranted about. Um, the little like game zone card. Um, I used those, how do you call it, like the Avery labely things. I've seen people use these on Instagram. I found some online. <laughs> um, you can't buy them in shops in the UK, it doesn't seem, but you can get them online. And I used it to hold the little plastic card. It worked pretty well. And I think these are reusable, you can peel it off. And then you just hole punch it, obviously. So that worked quite good. Um, and my nose is running, you'll have to forgive me. <laughs> um, and then I have photos here. So my grandma playing the arcade machine. And then the prizes we won, we had like 200 points tickets between us and all we could get was like some little finger puppets. <laughs> um, but they're really fun, they remind me of being a kid, so not the end of the world. We had the frogs you can push and they hop. And then again, this is just a mini super sticker club sticker. Um, I'll add some text about what we did. And then the Skywheel ticket, I just put that on with a paper clip. And then I have a photo from the top of the Skywheel. The reflections in there are awful. Um, it's really hard to film or take photos from it. The whole time, all you can see is the reflection of the window and the ride. So it's a bit of a nightmare, but we did our best. Um, and then we drove to Toronto that evening to stay in the apartment that I mentioned on Thursday. Um, so I put the photo of the night skyline and then I used the sweet dreams with a little world. I just thought they kind of match and it looks quite cute. <laughs> um, also I was hella tired and I did go to sleep, <laughs> so I think it's kind of fitting. And it just helps break the page up and make it interesting to look at. Um, obviously I don't have like too too much to say about each day, it's just kind of writing down what we did and how I was feeling. I don't need like a full page of writing, it's mostly the photos, so it's nice to break it up and have a little less room to write in, if you know what I mean. Again, I've got a lot of glue on the side here, <laughs> um, which is annoying, but not the end of the world, because good enough is good enough. Um, and now we're on Monday, which was our last day. We went to the airport Monday afternoon slash evening. And this is the one that I photocopied, because the actual ticket is obviously on receipt paper, so it's thermal, which means it'll fade. I don't really want it to fade, <laughs> because it has the skyline with the CN Tower in here. Um, and obviously because it's the ticket, I kind of don't want to lose it. Especially because I didn't actually film or take many photos in the CN Tower. It was kind of not super busy actually, it was kind of empty, but I just... It was okay, it wasn't like really stunning. <laughs> um, if you've ever been in a skyscraper, you're kind of like, okay, it's a city. Like, <laughs> um, so I was kind of like, not underwhelmed, because that feels disrespectful, but... I wasn't like super enthused. I'm glad we did it though, um, but I just didn't take that many photos up there. Um, I do have this one though, again, of me and my grandma standing on the glass floor. Um, and this to me, I think is more valuable than like a random photo of a skyline <laughs> because it has us in it. Um, and it's more about the memory of being there with her than I guess the city skyline itself. Um, and then I have my aquarium bits. So I have that photo of my grandmother with the fish. 
um, and I have the ticket with the joke on it. <laughs> um, and then on here, I put a photo of the stingray and the little coat check thing that I got. But um, hole punch that so that when you turn it over, it's the pay and display car park thing. Um, I just thought that was a good use of space and I like the way this all interacts because it is kind of layered again. So there's my grandma on the side and then the ticket. And then um, you can see the little mini super sticker club sticker under here because we were going home. Again, it was just to try and break the page up a bit, but I think it matches really well. Um, and then the Aer Lingus flight bag identification thing and then also the plane for the ride home. So that's it. Um, today I have this little photo of myself with all my ephemera before I stuck it all down. I took this on like Wednesday or Thursday, um, so that'll be catching up to actual time. Um, I'll probably date it for today and then just write about putting everything together and how tired I am. Um, might do some like jet lag reflection, <laughs> um, but that's how it pulled together. It's taken me an age to do it, um, and I am still kind of sick, which is a frustration, but... I hope this was interesting for you. As I said, let me know if you have any questions about how I went about it all. Um, hopefully it makes sense. I just, I think it's nice to layer things and that's part of why I give myself a margin as well is so that I have room to put things in different places. I kind of have areas I stick to. I use the middle of the page for a photo or I use the top of the page for a photo or I use the bottom of the page. <laughs> and those are kind of like my three sticking areas. This one is more middle again, but I spaced it for the sticker. Um, and that's kind of how I go about it. I know that I can layer two like this, and so I often do that. Um, so there's kind of like a formula I follow which keeps things creative and layered up, but also neat and consistent. Um, I think it's just one of those things that really comes through practice, and because I've been at this whole thing for so long, it just is quite effortless at this point, if not time consuming. <laughs> um, so there we go that's how it's looking i'm really happy with it actually the only thing that bothered me was when i had the pink sticker here but when i was able to change it i'm so happy now i think it really captures everything i need it to we can do a quick flick and you can see the full effect um obviously i'll take all this up and probably write some stuff here and then that'll be full too so then from uh, traveling on the first day and i'm really happy with the mood of this page and then through Blue Mountain and like arriving, which I think is nice. It's nice to have that one of the car because it shows the transition from like the airport to the car to visiting places. Um, it kind of builds a story, I guess, a narrative. <laughs> um, and then the postcard. And then there's bits on there. And I just think the textures and everything, the tactility of it all, um, you can't beat it. Like sure, I could have made an Instagram compilation post and maybe I still will, but this beats it hands down. <laughs> Um, it's better than a Facebook folder. Like, I just... It's nice. Um, yeah, I'm really happy with how it pulled together. That's my too long dinner read. I think it turned out better than I maybe expected or could have hoped for. Um, I might put another sticker on the side here or something, but I think it's good enough. And then my Frankenstein. All of these little bits. Like, I just think just think it pulled together well. Once all the writing is done, it will look great, I think. Um, and I like that there's so much to look at. So there we go. I did it. I survived <laughs> all of it. Um, hopefully this jet lag is going to be easing up the next couple of days. I do feel better this morning, so hopefully by tomorrow I'll be alright. Um, I hope this was interesting for you. I hope you enjoyed it. I'm sorry that it's only like 10 minutes of travel footage to like half an hour of talking. Um, I always think it's easy to film the talkie segments very long, but it's hard when you're out and you film the clips. Like, it's over a hundred clips, but it just only is ten minutes and it's just so... As I said, the whole thing of balancing trying to film stuff to remember it and then also be in the moment is, is you know, hard work. It's, it's a difficult balance. Um, but hopefully you enjoyed it. I hope you liked it. I would really like to revisit Canada. Um, I will say that everyone was very friendly in Canada. It was It was really sweet. Like, I'm a very polite British person very friendly like i'm a grumpy person but to people in public obviously to strangers i'm very friendly um and i don't think i was like polite enough somehow like i'm a polite british person <laughs> but somehow they were looking at me and i was thinking like i'm not doing this right somehow somehow it's not enough <laughs> um it was a really funny little feeling um but people are super super friendly everyone was so nice especially when they realize you're a tourist like in barry people were so happy to talk about barry they were so happy to know like why we were visiting and stuff they had so many questions and it all felt very like sincere and genuine um so thanks canada <laughs> had a good time hopefully i can come back sometime relatively soon and actually spend some like proper decent time there 
Um, I just have to try and find someone to go back with me. <laughs> um, it would be very hard without a car is the only thing, so I'd have to find a driver. <laughs> if anyone wants to be my designated driver in Canada, let me know. <laughs> um, but, okay, hope you enjoyed. I'm gonna go take a nap. <laughs> um, I don't know what I'm filming next week, but hopefully I'll be back on schedule shortly. Um, appreciate your patience while things have been a bit messy. Um, but there we go. Okay, I will see you next week.